Hi everybody, welcome back to the Desmo Works channel. Hope you're all keeping well and uh, not going too much up the walls in this lockdown period. So I thought I'd do a midweek video. Uh, well, later than midweek. Um, so I've had the question asked a few times, what, what tools do you need to use to take an engine apart? So, today I'm going to talk through everything that I typically use to strip and rebuild a Desmo Quattro engine. So Desmo Quattro only I'm talking about today. I'm going to break it down into two parts. I'm going to talk about standard tools that I use, which ho hopefully any sort of good mechanic is likely to have. And then I'm going to talk about the specialist Ducati tools or copies there of them that just help you do specific tasks within the engine itself. Okay. So in my best way that I can, I'm going to try and talk through each tool and what it's used for and why you need it. And some of it will be hopefully self-explanatory. So start with the easiest ones first, ratchet drive, extensions and torque wrenches go about saying tightening and loosening. Um, I've then got a breaker bar here. I don't tend to use a breaker bar too often because I use impact guns as you've seen, but it's a full back position just in case. Then I've got 22 mil spanner. Now that's used on the mobile pulley when you're tensioning the belts up to drive the nut on the Desmo Quattros. So, oh, sorry, on the early Desmo Quattros. So that therefore is, is a bit much of a requirement. We've then got hex keys, which are sizes four, five, six, and I forget this one, eight which does pretty much all of the hex headed keys, uh, hex headed bolts within the engine. So you tend to use the four on the clutch uh, and the alternator side cover access, the five for pretty much every six mil bolt in the engine. You've got the six for most of the eight mil bolts in the engine. And then the eight is tends to be used for um, the oil pressure relief cap that sits in the earlier engine. So if you've got a later engine, you probably won't need that one. Sorry, last minute addition, because I just forgot about it, a 10 to do your sump plug so you can drain the oil out. Socket wise, I use a 12.10 millimeter socket. Now that helps you do the conrod bolts and any 10 mil fittings that sit within the engine. I've got a 12 mil on a long reach here, but it can be short reach as well. It doesn't really matter. And that is to do your um, timing lock bolt, uh, sorry, timing lock nut on the mobile tensioner. A thin walled 16 mil spark plug socket so you can get the spark plugs out. A 19 mil socket. I just use a long reach one because that's what I like to use. That takes out your studs that hold in the fixed pulleys and also um, the mobile pulley retention in bolt as well. There's a 22 mil socket, which does your indent bolt cover piece. And then you've got a 30 and a 32 mil socket. Now these do the clutch nut that sits inside the engine and then also the primary drive gear nut and also the alternator nut um, so these are the ones that you welly up to like 186 newton meters i have a mark one persuasion stick commonly referred to as a mallet and that's just to help you tap covers and that every off and then circlet pliers so got internals so you close to it, remove the circlet and externals so you open to remove it and that helps you take off the um, bearing retaining circlips inside the engine and also the little circlips for the starter drive gear. A magnetic pickup for if you drop things and also helps you get the opener shims out of the engine. General purpose pair of pliers so that you can pick out um, 
the little dowels if needed and then two sets of bearing presses so just dies that you can use for the various sizes so goes all the way up to 81 millimeters for the big ones so this copes with your main bearings and then I've got the smaller set that just copes with the smaller bearings such as your gearbox bearings and the timing lay shaft bearings a set of pliers to remove oil filters so you can take that off I've got a set of uh, piston ring pliers so you can just remove individual piston rings and put them back in and then a micrometer for measuring your shims both for the gearbox the crank opening shims and closing shims uh, a set of metric feeler gauges so i've got the angled ones and the standard ones i tend to find that because i use the opening and closing uh, measurement method via loaded and unloaded that these tend to suffice but i've got those as a fallback plastic age so i can do my oil clearances on the big ends of the uh, big end bearings on the com rods against the crank pin then a magnetic stand and a dial gauge for measuring end float and uh, play when you're calculating the crankshafts and the gearbox shafts at um, engine being put back together stage and then personal preference i've got a low torque impact driver just for driving in and out nuts and bolts which have a low torque fitting or that you're taking repeatedly in and out just to make your job a bit easier and then the big dewalt is a thousand newton meter gun so i tend to run it on the mid setting which is about 450 newton meters and that just helps move any stubborn uh, nut or uh, bolt in the engine and i tend to use it with the big sockets so when you're doing the clutch the primary gear drive and the alternator nut just primarily because it just saves you hanging off the engine with the breaker bar so i think that is pretty much everything that is a standard tool and you could reasonably expect most people to have in their their toolkit you know stand stand fast impact guns because you might not have them that that costs about 800 pounds um so what dollar wise i think it's about 900 dollars so it's a pricey piece of kit um that was 100 quid so that's not too bad you might not have a dial gauge but it's not not too pricey that's around about uh 40 pound for the dial gauge and then the stand was another 20 pound um most of your socket sets don't tend to come with these big ones so these have been bought individually the 30 and 32 mils but pretty much everything else I, i'd like to assume that a good a good home mechanic will will typically own these sort of tools so i'm pretty sure you can you can find them easily you know whatever is your preferred source of purchasing whether that be ebay amazon your local motor factors store or if you're really blessed your local tool wagon that comes around sorry and a last minute minute edition which i just noticed after i started editing the one piece that i forgot in the listing was a uh, piston ring compressor so this one goes out to 106 millimeters but bear in mind for most most of the engines in a desmo quattro range you've got 88 millimeter pistons for the 748 you've got 94 millimeter pistons for the 916 and then i think off the top of my head um it's 98 millimeters or 100 millimeters for the 996 dependent on the configuration of the stroke if you're dealing with a standard engine or an rs engine what do we need then specialist tool wise so there's a few tools here and i'll try and explain what they are and where i use them so i've got the shim tool now this acts against the closing shim to enable you to push it down and expose the collets to remove the shims for when you're doing clearances. I've got the rocker arm pin removal tool, which is like a slide hammer so you can drive the rocker pins out. I've got my little tool for leaning against the closing arm when I'm doing my loaded calculations for shim clearance. You've got You've got this special socket which is used to take off the cam nuts 
and the nut that sits at the end of the timing pulley shaft that holds the pulley wheels in for the belts. Then you've got two alternator holding tools dependent on the type of engine that you're working on. This first one is a tool that holds the early two-phase stator or people refer to it as a single-phase stator which has got the unique holding arms inside there so you can hold that correctly. And then for the free phase stator, you've got this arm that bolts on the outside of the case and then physically clamps the alternator through here. Where you might struggle using this tool, and it's, it's quite an important one, if you've got one of the 748Rs, or if you're lucky enough to have a 748RS, you may have the smaller generator on, which means you are going to struggle to use this tool because the flywheel on there is much smaller, so it doesn't actually grip. And I've, I've had that a couple of times when I've built 748Rs, that this tool doesn't work. That's where you fall back to the bad boy because you can usually welling the nut off without needing to use a holding tool. You've got the engine turning tool and you can also put a timing disc on there so you can do the engine timing as well. You've got your closing shim measurement tool which gives us a known measurement to work from. The gear selector tool, so this is the official Ducati one which just makes your life a lot easier when you need to set up the selector fork into the selector drum on the drive rocks sprock on the drive pins sorry uh, you've got the alternator cover removal tool the cam holding tool for when you're putting the belts on that holds it in the correct timing positions then dependent on how you like to do up the heads you've either got an extension piece 15 mil by the way, an extension piece for your torque wrench or you've got what is basically a copy of the main Ducati direct drive so you don't have to worry about multiplication factors. At the back there you've then got for when you're doing valve timing you've got the tools and the feet to hold dial gauges in place to be able to measure your valve movement. Then a cheap uh, clutch holding tool now again because I tend to use the um, big impact gun this suffices but you can get tools that hold the whole basket and the whole drum uh, or you can just use this side one and then you've got the clavis belt tension meter which is the ultrasonic tool um, there is there is a tension tool that um, Ducati used to use years ago but I don't know anybody that manufactures that and I haven't seen one for a sale for a long time but these crop up once in a while. If you can't afford one of these or you can't find one of these then a really good microphone and guitar tuning software can get you past that piece. And then sorry one tool that I forgot to mention when I was talking about standard tools is obviously a timing wheel so that when you're doing your timing check you're doing it the easy way so this is a four stroke timing wheel so it's broken up into 90 degree quadrants that makes it a lot easier to understand what you're doing and that I, I, I'm classing this as a Ducati part but it doesn't need to be but that goes with your engine turning tool and is designed to fit on the back of that tool so there you go I think that is just about every every tool that I use to strip an engine from the current state that you'd see there all the way down to base component level and then all the way back up to built. Um, the only one that I haven't mentioned is the big bear impress. However, it should be noted that good engineering practice to install or remove bearings is to heat your cases and cool the bearings when you're pushing them back in so that you remove as much of the interference as possible and let that close back up and provide the interference. And then just for a basic overview of some of the fluids that are used during the assembly process. Engine assembly lube, which is a really thick oil to assist the braking period. And that's just because when you first turn over an engine that's dry, it's going to take a few seconds for the oil to get around all the engine. Using this on every contact surface just protects the engine during that initial braking period. Medium strength 
thread locking fluid. I then use the high strength sleeve and bush fluid on the main bearings just to in ensure that they grip tight. Uh, you've got free bond 1215 for the cases. So that, that helps you put the put on and seal the clutch cover, the um, generator cover and the main cases and the barrels when you seal them. Red rubber grease so that you lube anything up that's a seal so that it's um, got a bit of extra life in it. And then just engine oil in a can. So I tend to put this in every single bearing, um, try and prime the oil pump slightly with it. Um, as well as it just makes filling up the oil filter a little bit cleaner and easier although you can directly fill it up with your with your oil cam okay so there we have it um, that is a walk through pretty much of every generic tool and specialist tool that I use to strip down a Desmo Quattro engine be that 748 916 or 996 um, and if ever I get lucky enough a 955 engine um, you can see that there's quite a lot of standard tooling and to say that you could not strip the engine down without the specialist Ducati tools would be a lie they just make the job so much easier and, and believe me if you do a lot of engines you want your life to be a lot of bit a little bit easier um, so I hope that was sort of some value to those of you that have been asking for me to go through what tools you need to strip the engines down if it is chuck us a like uh, if you've got any questions or comments about any of the tools that I've covered here in this little brief video, then please feel free to chuck uh, the question down below and I'll try and get back to you as soon as possible. But hope you enjoyed the video. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. It will come up shortly in a second. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Cheers then. Bye.